scheduled. Oh, wow. I think it's scheduled. It's ske- man, scheduled. We're yes, live. Yes, it's just live. Oh, man. It went oh, from it's scheduled to now. live. What's up with it's that? It's on now. Oh, What's up with people. That? We got extra. We got extra faces in the crowd. We got extra people's on the screen. Oh, yeah. it's on now. We got extra fa- extra faces in places. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, ain't, ain't man, wrong, ain't wrong we got a good today, boy. Oh yeah. Hey, we it, man, we live for 29, 30 seconds already. Oh, did you share it? Did you do your I, thing? No, nah, man. You know me, man. You know I look like an oh, old man when oh, I'm trying to now. share it, man. I haven't done it yet, man. You know I'm trying to get my poop in the group, man. <laughs> I'm trying to get my poop in the group. Oh, there it is, right there. See, I see oh, it now. Dude. See, I, I see it now, man. Last time I didn't see it. Last time it was it was all messed up. I'm gonna share it now. Boom! Hit share. Share on my timeline. Boom! Biggity. Share there now. I'm going public. I'm coming out. I'm coming out Uh-oh. of the closet. I'm coming out the closet. I'm coming out of the closet, man. Man, I'm coming out of the closet. Don't judge me, man. Don't judge me. <laughs> Don't judge me, dude. I'm coming out there like it that. Is. Man. I'm coming out like that, dude. All right. Well, we're out. We're live and direct. We're live and direct. Hey, I am Kirk M. Samuels. And I am Jason B. Kendrick. And we are the mad men of masculinity, baby. That's right. We're just real men having real conversations for you. We got a doozy today. Not only we got a doozy today, we got an extra face on the screen with us today. We got, a, we got an right here. Dude. We got an extra. Yeah. We, we do we get, and we got a doozy and we got an extra dude. Extra doozy dude. So Let's this see, is. Can we smush his face? Let's see. If we we're gonna, we're gonna do a little smushy, smushy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, we just keep it real, man. We just keep it real. Try yeah, to have good, a little bit of hey, fun. Good luck adding that hand to your screen, Dave. Good luck. Yeah. That <laughs> you might be able to get away with his, but you can't get away with mine. But, uh, anyhow, so this man. guy. This right guy. here in the middle, Dave Glazer is a good Gigi. friend of ours. He Gigi. is the host of the Believe Be Real Be Bold podcast, and he's also a fitness dude. So you know, I don't take my shirt off around Dave no more. No. I never did. Never the did. The sad part is I can't even say like dad bod because he has a kid, so I can't even say like I got a dad bod because I got no excuse, man. <laughs> Gigi, what's up, man? What's happening, baby? What's going on, Dave? Introduce yourself to the people on the Mad Men page. I'm doing great, boys. Thanks for having me. It's been a long time coming ever since we chatted on the on the podcast, which I've been ecstatic to host for the last couple of years. Uh, really began as an ex- exploration into my own uh, relationship journey, mostly with myself. And then uh, the more I learn about myself, the more fun I have with other people relating and um, debating. I mean, we get into a lot of debates based on uh, the topic of love and Enneagram, attachment theory, and love languages, and how they come together to form a strong foundation for a healthy relationship. Dude, now I got to warn you, DG, we keeps it real around here, yeah. man. This is the keep it real joint right here, man. So, you know, we, say a lot of our stuff values. That, we say a lot of stuff that other people wouldn't say. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We keeps it real around this joint. What is an Enneagram, man? Yeah. The the Enneagram is one of my favorite tools for uh, personal discovery and self-awareness. Um, it's an old tool that was used by um, European churches to help their congregations grow. So there's a, a Christian background to it. But, uh, you know, people who believe more in the universe or in the source, they can use it as a tool to help deepen their understanding of themselves and their partner if they're in a relationship. Mm. So is that like a personality test kind of thing? Yeah, one of the many that's out there. Yeah. Uh, the Enneagram is broken down into nine types. And, um, nine. Jason, and Jason mentioned that I'm a fitness guy, so I'm known as the challenger. And I am enthusiastic about challenging people to help them get to their goals. <clears throat> well, wh- I'm, a, I'm a cuddler. What is that on the Enneagram? <laughs> you're that's my favorite language. type. I don't care what kind of Enneagram <laughs> type you are. If you're a cuddler, I've gone so long without physical touch, boys. Man, and you do, uh, you do, um, um, uh, um, uh, like, uh, what is, is it, judo or what, 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 what do you uh, do? Jiu-jitsu. 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 What's the difference between judo and jujitsu? Uh, uh judo is throwing people using their body weight against them. Uh, jujitsu is what happens after you judo throw them to the ground. Nice. It's all, it's nice. all the grappling and stuff when they're on the ground and you're like, what are they doing? It's like, they're, they're. They're trying to get joints into painful positions. Basically. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, they're, they're cuddling with their pajamas they're, on. They're, cut, they're cuddling, yeah. Yeah, no, nah, I can't do that, man. I'm sorry. Nah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm getting too mad, man. I'd be wanting to fight people for real, man. I'd just mess around and push somebody in the face. But yeah. uh, it happens. It yeah, happens yeah. in I the can. in the school, yeah. Occasionally. I can't mess around with all that. Hey man, so we talked about last time. Was it last week? 
It was last week we talked about hero syndrome. We talked about the hero (laughs) syndrome. Um, And uh, I forgot what we said, JBK. Do you remember what we said about that? Oh, I mean, just about the man needing to be the hero in the relationship or whether that's and and whether that hero syndrome is coming from a healthy place or or a place of insecurity because a lot of times that hero syndrome will come from that place of i'm not enough so i got to make myself a hero and i was actually doing a little research today on hero syndrome and there is a definition that hero syndrome is the creating of problems and challenges the creating of issues to become the hero which i was like Mm. ooh, Mm. Uh wow so we decided we wanted to take a twist on this thing. Yes. We decided to put a little spin on it. it. And we twisted it, and then we brought in a secret weapon. Uh-huh. And the secret weapon is DG. Because <laughs> I, you know, when we were originally talking about that whole idea a couple of weeks ago, I think you guys were at like an event or a picnic or something like that. And, yeah. and JBK, you and I were like texting back and forth, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and I think one of the spins or one of the twists that we put on that is that a guy can have the hero syndrome in the context of a relationship. And just in the context of his home or his work or just the world or whatever, where, you know, we just want to be that guy. You know, we want to be the hero. We want to, you know, for whatever our motivations are, you know, uh, guys, we just want to be that guy. And so then we put the twist on it and said, you know what? Not only do we just want to be that guy in a relationship, but we want to be that guy in the bedroom. Oh, yeah. No, like that conversation that Dave and I had, and that's why I was like, we got to get him on. He's got to be here for this because we were talking about hero syndrome and I made some comment about, you know, need to be good in the bedroom and making sure she's satisfied. And he made this face like he smelled something awful. He's like, mm. so what you're saying that your orgasm is my responsibility. And I was like, Oh, that's it. He's on. <laughs> so that's why we brought Dave on because he's going to be our secret weapon. We're going to dig into this hero syndrome, especially in the context of in the bedroom. Maybe that thing that he smelled was you. Um, but, why, uh, why you gotta go there? Why, why you gotta we, we were why out in the sun all day, yeah. <laughs> smeller, <laughs> he was smelling what the JBK was cooking. Yeah, um, yeah that's right. But uh, so, 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 Dave, what, what do you think of? I mean, just what, what's your take on that whole idea? I mean, first of all, do you agree? Do you disagree? But then, what's your take on that whole thing off the off the cuff? Uh, let's go way back, boys. Let's go no. back to way back um, <laughs> to like <laughs> our our biology and our human history and being a hero in the small groups that our human ancestors started to form was actually rewarded with more um, reproduction success, reproductive success. So it became ingrained in us in our psychobiology based on those um, dominant traits that are passed down generation to generation. So the hero in us is attractive to a mate who wants to pass on that hero gene. Mm. So that's the origination of how the hero syndrome could be adapted in the modern era. And Jason's correct. Like uh, where, where we're talking about it psychologically nowadays is that an arsonist would start a fire so that he could run in and be the hero by saving a cat a human, uh, a woman, you know, and then if we bring it closer in, into our relationships, it's kind of a subset. I think Jason alluded to this, a subset of the nice guy syndrome, where if we are the white knight in our relationship, where we are the savior of our partner, well, well now we're talking about codependency here, here, here guys. Mm-hmm. And like, that's where it gets a negative connotation and an unhealthy uh, foundation for our relationships now. Mm. So are we creating dependency so that we can have codependency? <laughs> well, by by creating dependency, you are codependent. So mm. if my partner needs me for everything and the context that I was researching in preparation for this is that um, a white knight or the hero in this situation will seek out a woman with a history of trauma so that he can fix her. And what do we know about trying to fix our partners, gentlemen? Mm. I know I've had much, I've had actually probably the last three relationships I've actually been in that were long term. It was me coming in to save or heal or be that white knight or be, be that, that person that came in to, to fix their traumas, which that was just my insecurities of being, uh, it, it may be if I heal her or help her or make her more whole she will love me more but that was just mm. about my own insecurities and nice guy stuff of trying to be that white knight and, mm. and as we know that does not work and actually that's coming mm. from an unhealthy lack place so why am i feeling the urge to 
to push back and to challenge you two gentlemen and uh and, and favorite and, word and, and float it out there float it out there that um that could it be a, a positive thing for a guy now i mean we're going to take the spin to the whole bedroom thing but could it be a positive thing for a guy to um to want to engage in some level of i'm going to use the word intimacy for the sake of providing space and container for her and safety for her and almost like purpose <laughs> purpose um you know part of his purpose being being that being that other part of him whether it be a bride or relationship or whatever it is so it, what's wrong with that i mean what, what's mm. what's wrong with wanting to wanting to you know be the man to open the door to lead to be the tip of the spear what's wrong with all that it, it, that's coming from that more healthy place of being mm. the masculine being provider and and and, and stepping into it, like having that purpose like i am the mm. masculine i'm the provider and, and and doing those things naturally from a space of foundational and wholeness versus that unnatural kind of lag mentality. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, Dave, go, go at it because I know you've got something to say about that. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a great question, Kirk. And it comes from our intentions. Is our intention to be the white knight, to be the savior, to be the hero so that we can hold that over our partner and expect something in return? Ooh. And that's a covert Ooh. contract. And now we're talking about nice guy stuff. And Bing. that's why... Yeah, that's why having the white knight um, as a subset of nice guy behavior, nice guy syndrome, and the covert contract. Okay, I'm going to save you in the beginning mm -hmm. so that I have a one up mentality over mm -hmm. you, like mm -hmm. the projection of uh, I'm healthier than my partner. My partner needs more saving than I do. Now we're on a road for destruction. Mm -hmm. So oh, let me push wow. back on you, Kirk. Can I ask you a question about something I heard that you said nope. in there? Nope. <laughs> I'm scared of your question. Go ahead, man. Now, I just want to ask a clarifying question. Were you saying that uh, a man's partner is part of his purpose? I just wanted to ask that clarifying question. You know, I, I think I, I think from a, a masculine perspective, um, I think, and I haven't given this any in depth thought. This is just really off the cuff, just off of the off the end of the sleeve. I think you know part of. You know, part of of my masculine being, part of that purpose includes the feminine in my life and providing that for her. She is not my purpose. She's not my job to fix or anything like that. But I'm just talking about in the course of my carrying out who I am as a man. You know, I, I don't think there's anything inherently other than you know where you talked about motivations and intentions being offhand. I don't think it's completely out of place for her to be part of my daily purpose my my part part of my service part of my ministry part of my you know part of my my calling mm -hmm. yeah I can jason kind of what you got brother that. well i kind of agree with that but it, it it does definitely come down to what is the motivation what is the mm -hmm. seed like that, mm -hmm. that, that that's growing from because mm -hmm. if we're living in our purpose and part of our purpose as masculine as a man is to be that provider and that one that 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 provides the, the, the resources and the tools for the feminine to create from or to the, the, the home or, or those things, those things will do naturally because that's just kind of ingrained in us. That's part of us. That's kind of goes back to what you were talking about, Dave, about, you know, the biggest and strongest, the alpha male got the most opportunities to mate. They got the, they got the healthiest mates and things because they wanted to have the healthier offspring and things. And it's kind of transitioned now into how do we provide, how do we create a stable foundation for the family and for our, our loved ones? But are we doing it just to be the white knight from insecurity or are we doing it because this mm -hmm. is just a part of my purpose and who I'm being? And mm -hmm. I think that's what mm -hmm. we as the men have to ask ourselves I mean, and check ourselves. Because I know we'll, we'll go in and out. You know, some days we're, we're on top of the world. We're strong. We're Superman. And the next day we're, you know, in our kryptonite and feeling mm -hmm. less than and we need to check ourselves and go, well, mm -hmm. am I acting from my highest good? Am I acting from my highest being or am I acting from this lack, feeling less than mentality? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, Alicia! Alicia says she loves this topic. That's Go right. Ahead. By the way, if you type in comments, we can see them right here on the yeah. side of our screen. So, ask any questions, give us feedback, or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Make sure you you share, like, comment, share, like, give us topics, all that kind of stuff. So, I want to I want to spin this. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna jump Left in, turn. and then I'm gonna spin this to where we want to go. So, um, in everything that I said, and I've made this mistake in the past, relationally speaking, is oh no, you're the only one. No, <laughs> looking for guilty, looking, looking for validation 
from her, whoever she is, looking for a sense of identity from her. Now, I need to bring her my identity, not looking for my identity in her. So that goes back to the intention and motivations. And so I think validation can kind of be a, a really sensitive topic now. So taking that validation and take everything that we're saying in terms of purpose and the hero and all that kind of stuff. I mean, and, and, and oh, by the way, DJ, you work with a lot of women too. So you, you get the feedback from both sides. I mean, you know, all of us do really, yeah. but you know, but in the context of us guys wanting to be that hero, is there, a, is there a part of the reason why we want to be the hero in the bedroom because we want validation from her? 100% that um, I think as a human, human nature, we seek validation, validation for our experience, validation for our feelings and validation for ourselves. Um, one of the biggest reasons why I'm a proponent for joining a men's group, uh, getting involved with mm -hmm. men's work mm -hmm. is that uh, we mm -hmm. as the masculine energy can be validation for each other. Mm -hmm. And then we're not seeking it from our partner Mm -hmm. in the feminine and that creates a stronger bond long term when we aren't seeking that validation from the feminine mm. yeah. i mean you just keyed in on just the, the gist the the, the 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 golden nugget of nice guy syndrome we've been trained over generations to look to the feminine for our validation and when we do that it leads to those unhealthy relationships and and that those covert contracts of i'm going to do this for you but i'm going to keep score and then mm. when you talk about that and bring it into those intimate relationships in the bedroom. I mean, mm -hmm. no wonder we have a white knight superhero syndrome like in the bedroom because that is that is the our greatest validation. And of course, maybe it's societal, maybe it's just ingrained in us. But if we perform in the bedroom, if we, if we can take care of their needs in the bedroom and we can feel validated by our performance in the bedroom, then that is, and that's, that is white knight syndrome, you know, hero syndrome all in a nutshell there because that is, where we can in that one moment in that one session in that one hour whatever it is give ourselves all that validation and pat ourselves on the back like look what i did i'm good mm -hmm. now but is that mm -hmm. coming from the healthy place or is that coming from that need to validate ourselves see when i mm -hmm. when i when i talk about like even when i talk about pornography and that kind of stuff from a male perspective you know in all of my six v's that last one is validation uh -huh. so i i unpack kind of the chemistry behind it and then I say, that's like the pill bottle, but validation is like the label on the bottle that says who owns the drug and who the drug owns. And I think from a, from a sexuality perspective, you know, we get a lot of our sense of worth and value through our sexuality. And so when, our, when, when we plug our sexuality into that validation, into seeking value and identity, it's always gonna be off because feminine can't validate the masculine. She can, she or it, it can show us what we're not. Um, I mean, in, in contrast, but you know, a contrast is not the picture. The negative is not the picture. The negative is what you develop the photo from, but the negative is not it, you know? And, and so if you look at the negative, you'll see, well, wait a minute, Kirk ain't white. Why does he look white? Well, it's the, you know, cause it's a negative. So, I mean, I think in the context of the bedroom and especially, you know, again, we, we really, we, a lot of our audience happens to be women, you know, when she finds herself being his source of validation, she'll probably never really be fulfilled, right? Mm. Mm. Maybe deep down in her uh, the depths of her core, maybe not. Um, mm. Maybe surface level, um, physically, she'll be satisfied occasionally. And what I like to introduce this topic of um, the bedroom talk is our our validation comes from our performance as the masculine energy. We're always validated through performance at work, mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. sports, through our accomplishments. And then it comes down to our performance in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And when we attach our, our value and our self-worth to our performance in the bedroom, that's when the dissatisfaction from our feminine energy partner comes from. Yeah, mm. it's, definitely, it's definitely a slippery slope. And I've, I've had those experiences where if I didn't feel like I performed well enough, or if I had one of those, you know, quick minute men moments where it's like, oh, I'm too excited and that's over with. And then not, and it's half the time when I look back on it now, it had almost nothing to do with my partner's reaction, mm -hmm. but it was a story I created about how unworthy I was and, and how their reaction. And, and so it's, it's how we take those things and, and turn them into the story of, oh, I'm not good enough. So now I need to perform even better or, and then sometimes mm -hmm. that even translates into like, you know, what we talked about before, Kirk, about, you know, 
using that IP mistress as that, okay, well, she's not going to treat me badly or react mm -hmm. negatively, so I'm going to go use porn versus mm -hmm. trying to be intimate with my partner and create right. a, a more healthy relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between, there's a difference between, um, seeking validation and being a pleaser per se in terms of i, I mean I, I i don't think it's inappropriate to uh want to satisfy or please your partner i think if you're intimate then you want to you know when you win i win when the tide comes in all boats rise right so yeah, yeah. i mean so i think you know naturally when you're in a healthy scenario i'm pouring it to you you're pouring it into me so we're never empty right i mean it, it's, it's overflow i'm just returning what i got from you um mm -hmm. And so I think there's a difference between validation, seeking validation and being a pleaser, but I think, or, or wanting to please the other person. Um, I think when you, when your motivation is just to please the other person seeking validation, that becomes work for her. Yeah. Like, cause then she has to, now here's one more thing I got to do. I got to make you feel validated. I got to make mm -hmm. you feel like a man. And it's like one more thing that she has to do that day, as opposed to just being present. And you can't be present when you're just, 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 trying to please for validation. Well, and then mm -hmm. there's also the other side to it too, which is really kind of part of that nice guy syndrome, uh, people pleaser kind of thing where if you can't receive, like it, it's, it's all fine and dandy and well, mm -hmm. you want to please your partner. But when it's the reciprocation comes and you're not able to receive because all you know how to do is try to please them and try to perform and try to be the best that you can be and you don't know how to be present and receive, that's, that, and that was my experience for many years. It was, I don't even know how to receive like they, you know, as a loving partnership in, in a sexual relationship, it's a give and take. It's a back and forth. Each of you gets the opportunity to please and receive. Mm -hmm. and that's part of the whole journey. And if you can't receive, if it's just about pleasing, red flags. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. sirens, everything going off. And that was my experience. And one of the things that I still today have to be conscious of and work on that. Oh, wait, no, receiving is giving and giving is receiving. Mm -hmm. That's that's something that I think I can take forward with me here, boys, is, you know, being intentionally single for coming up on three years now. Um, seven for me now. Seven. OK. All right. Uh, I can envision myself in the next relationship, the next intimate relationship, um, exploring my new partner and not necessarily seeking that validation at the end of like, oh, was it good for you? Did you did you finish? Um I spend that time exploring my new partner and then what happens long-term in a relationship, we just stop exploring. Mm -hmm. And that exploration mm -hmm. is the definition of being present in mm -hmm. the bedroom. Mm. Wow. My Man, that's there, deep, dude. That was for real. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you, you get the red star, the gold star on that one. Well, um, that's, that's actually a great point. I mean, we've had this discussion before about when you're present with your woman, because women are, are, are fluid, they're emotional beings, they're always constantly changing. And if you can be present with her, you got a different woman all the time, because yeah. depending on the day and the mood and everything. So that's, that's a great point. Yeah. You can be present and explore who she is today. I mean, yeah. man. But if, if you don't give her the opportunity to give, right. then you end up giving out of an empty cup and you're really giving to receive because you're empty, right? And so, I mean, I, I think if you don't leave some space for her, and I'm using her and him, just you know, just, just go with me. Yeah, just generality. <laughs> but uh, whatever your pronouns are, you can adjust. Um, <laughs> but um, but we but I think if you don't leave space and if you don't leave opportunity for her to to lean in and to serve, then then you're out of balance. Then then at some point you got to say, okay, I mean, uh, where where am I getting what I'm pouring out if she never pours in? I mean, how do how do I connect with her femininity if if so? But then back to your point, DG. I think mm -hmm. yeah, you got to be around guys, man. Because I mean, it, it, it takes men to make men. I mean, you got to be around other guys, man. That 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 help you sharpen that saw and sharpen that sword and 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 bring that back to her. She wants masculinity. I mean, she mm -hmm. she might want some femininity. I mean, but you know, but she wants she's with you if you're a man for your masculinity to a degree, whatever your polarity is, but. So anyhow, but yeah, I think, I think it has to be a reciprocal kind of thing. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of, um, layers that we're talking about here earlier. We were talking about putting your partner on a pedestal. Well, if we put our partner on a pedestal in the bedroom and we're always pleasing our partner and never receiving, well, then the feminine can never be a support. Well, that's what they want. They want mm -hmm. to support the masculine in his mm -hmm. purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if he's purpose, if he's a purpose driven masculine energy, then he's going to be focused on that championship 
and she gets to choose her champion. Mm, yeah. Wow. Yeah, she gets to serve the warrior. When, uh, since, since we are fluid beings, and yeah, as men, we're, we tend to be more masculine in our energy, and women tend to be more feminine, although nowadays, and we talk about this a lot, especially with nice guy syndrome and superwoman syndrome, how the ladies can be in their masculine and how that can affect the bedroom as well. Mm. You know, masculine and masculine, there's no polarity. Feminine to feminine, there's no polarity. Mm. So being, being a conscious man doing his work, understanding that if your woman comes home in your relationship and she's been at work all day and she's in her masculine, if you don't take the time to help her shift to be that support in that way, which means you have to step into your feminine to be that love and support to get her to mm. shift. Mm. You know, if you're just trying to be masculine just because you're a man and masculine or, or vice versa, just trying to be feminine because you're in a female body. Mm. Sometimes you need to switch roles. And I mean, so, and that's a good, good point for even the bedroom. Sometimes you got to switch roles. Sometimes you got to receive. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you about that, uh, Jason. Now that, now that you bring it up, uh, tell me more about, the masculine slipping into the feminine so that the feminine partner who's working all day, spending time in her masculine switches. Uh, explain yeah. that just a little bit more. It, it, it kind of looks like if you, if you imagine like the old fifties thing where the husband comes home from work and the wife's got the martini for him and gives him his slippers and a cigar and all that stuff. It's almost that, but in the, the reverse. So she comes home and he's like, Oh honey, how was your day? He asks questions. He's like, here's a glass of wine or whatever. Let's get you into your, your PJs or your, your sweats. Let's get that hair put up in a ponytail and just kind of guides her back into her feminine. And as soon as she's back in her feminine, he can get back into his masculine. And now you have that polarity and it, it mm. creates the sexual polarity that we both need. If we're, if we're operating from the same energy or similar energies, there's no polarity. There's usually, if you're both a masculine competition, or if you're both in feminine, it's like, oh, let's share, let's, let's do our hair. Let's, mm. There's no polarity. You're just girlfriends now or whatever. So. Mm -hmm being aware that it's not just one or the other this is not a this or that since you know situations like this and that you're mm. a man but you have your feminine side and you can utilize that as a loving supportive man and allow her to transition back in her feminine and if you don't mm -hmm. do that then i mean it's not going to work in the bedroom so by default are you saying that women also need to work on getting out of their masculine yes hmm. yeah. Yeah, let me let me uh, let me ask one more clarifying question, Jason, because I want to follow you uh, so that we can we can dive deep. You know, uh, asking yeah, me, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's say your your feminine partner comes home and she's in her masculine because she's been working all day, and you ask her that question um, of how was your day. Can that come from your masculine pole in order to get her to slide back into her feminine? I would, yeah, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter where you're coming from, but just in general, you know, the masculine tends to be more directive and more um, like action oriented. So, but it, it, it could very well come from your masculine. The reason I usually say slip into your feminine is that supportive thing. If she's in her masculine, then you're naturally creating a polarity by slipping into your feminine until she's changed and then you can change back. If you, if you come in and come at her from your masculine, here, honey, drink this glass of wine, get in your PJs, put your hair up because I'm tired of you being all in your masculine. You're gonna start a fight. So mm. that's why I was saying being more supportive and slipping in your feminine is that helpful thing, which is interesting because coming from a military background, a lot of officers dealing with alpha men and, and, and all these masculine men will use a feminine, more subtle, supportive energy to lead them. Instead of being like, You're gonna do this, da 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 da. A lot of times from the officer's point of view, they'll be more of, Well, what can we do together? How can we support this? How can we do this team? thing which is less of the directive masculine but more of the kind of group supportive thing and so it's mm -hmm. interesting how we can look at something from a oh that's a very masculine point of view but using that supportive more feminine like teamwork kind of thing if, if mm -hmm. that makes sense all right all right yeah let me let me uh let me go a little bit further into the evening like um if we slip into our feminine <laughs> how far are well you about to go <laughs> <laughs> Well, like I said, guys, it's been a while since I've had physical touch. So this is the best that I got right now, you know, and hanging out with you boys. Well, I'm glad, I'm, well, I'm glad we online, man, and not in person. Yeah. Amen to that. Uh, all jokes aside, like if I slip into my feminine because I arrived home first and my feminine partner spent all day in her masculine at work, which I absolutely love an empowered, driven, strong willed woman who's out there earning everything that she needs it to earn. Absolutely. So if I slip into my feminine to welcome um, that feminine energy who spent time in her masculine back into the space, 
how long will I stay in that feminine? Will that feminine energy on, from my side stay with me until I want to go to the bedroom at the end of the night? Mm. Well, it's, it's, it's a moment to moment thing. You can shift your energy in a second, you know, and it, it could be just a thought. You can go from supportive to, to directive very quickly. So it's not like this is going, it's not like it's going to, you know, you take the pill and it lasts eight hours. Like this is, this is a moment to moment thing, which that's the thing as well. You can still be in your mask and if she comes home, as long as you're present and aware, you can say, okay, where is she at right now? Where, what is she doing? Is she still in her masculine from work or has she gone to have, uh, you know, uh, cocktails with her girlfriends at happy hour and now she's back into her feminine. Mm. So being present. And that's, I think that's really the key to everything we're talking about being present, not looking for validation, whether it's in the bedroom or the boardroom or whatever the thing is mm -hmm. being there to go, okay, what, what is the, what is going, what is the tool that I can use now to be the most effective? And I think it is a being present kind of thing. And that, that's the that's the intimacy of being present. And I picture in my mind, you know, I think in pictures, I, I, I picture in my mind a dance where it's like doing the salsa. One person's foot goes forward, the other person's foot goes backwards. But then that evening is also a rhythm. And so if you're present in the rhythm and if you're present in the dance, then at the appropriate time in the rhythm, in the pace of the of the moment of the night of the song of the evening, then uh, you've gone forward. Maybe it's time now to, I put my foot back and the other foot comes. I mean, and, and so you just end up in this dance kind of thing. And then, you know, as you, as the dance continues through the song, you just gain it more and more connection. And then you really connect at, at some point, you literally connect. Um, uh, but I, I picture in my mind, you know, in terms of what you're describing, uh, David, is like that dance and you're present. And it's not just about, okay, I'm just going to lay down and just serve you in, indefinitely until you give me the green light. It's like, mm -hmm. it is, is the dance. It's the rhythm of all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And, and that's the service. I, I do love that dance analogy because a masculine partner can lead his feminine partner mm -hmm. by taking a step back. Mm -hmm. There's still that leadership presence mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. even if I am stepping back in that mm -hmm. salsa uh, that salsa move i'm not much of choreographed dancing you know the waltz mm -hmm. and the salsa <laughs> and the tango those things aren't mm -hmm. my area of expertise mm -hmm. but i can definitely put myself in that scenario mm -hmm. uh in the kitchen after a long hard day at work and i may even just grab my partner and dance with her and mm -hmm. ask that question of like mm -hmm. hey how was your day as i spin and i move side to side because mm -hmm. i can do that from my masculine energy to get her to slide back into her feminine. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and it, even in that scenario, man, we're just this whole dance thing. So even in that scenario, man, you know, once you've gone forward, especially if, if as we're talking about it, you, you coming out of feminine and, and trying to get her out of her masculine, even in the going forward, then you pulling back, create space and, mm -hmm. and you creating space allows even that, if you will, the other side of that, that, that masculine to then come forward and, and then come back into you in a, in a, in an almost act of, of following um, and service and, and femininity kind of thing. And so then, it, and, and you know, especially us as guys, if we come home at the end of a day and we have a crazy day, we disappear. Like we want space, right? We want we want to go in the closet and change or we want to go to the bathroom and act like we're taking a deuce or whatever. But, but we, <laughs> you know, we want space because we're just in that, that hyper-masculine space. So kind of the same thing with, with her, if, if she's in that, then yeah, we might come in but then we might also back off. And, and when we back off at that appropriate moment, then then that creates space for her to decompress as opposed to like, oh God, last thing I need is one more person in my face. Allowing her that that elastic, you know, that elastic kind of a, you know, effect. And then, you know, and then the response to that is, is to come back into this whole thing. But man, we could freaking talk forever. Hey, I gotta, before we run out of time, I really wanna get into this question of, if, we, if we're trying to be a hero in the bedroom, and it comes from a place of validation. To me, that says we're coming from a place of insecurity about who we are and what we bring. If we're coming from a place of insecurity, then does that mean we aren't sure about our masculinity in itself? I think that might be the core of it. I think we may not be feeling solid within ourselves. And so we're looking to validate ourselves through performance with our feminine. And then if we don't get that, then we're you know, searching for something else to validate ourselves versus being solid in our core being like, this is who I am and, and I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Kirk. I think that after the last couple of years of interviewing experts like yourselves on the podcast and asking them 
Uh, the number one question I ask everybody is what holds people back in their relationships nowadays? And it's fear. Whether that's a man or a woman, um, their fear is at the foundation of a lot of their decision making. And fear, insecurity, lack of confidence, those are all um, from that same place. Mm. And we're human beings, like we're seeking connection. That we're social beings. We're looking for that deep connection, intimate connection with a, a partner. And there's a lot of different ways you can seek that out from one end of the spectrum, polyamorous or monogamous. And there's a lot of different shades of gray in the middle. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all included in, in our community and in the conversation of sexual intimacy between the white knight and that person he's trying to save. Hmm. So, so as we're 35 minutes in this thing, what's our takeaway? Like, what, what's our takeaway from, from just the idea of a man um, seeking, I think we've established that when you're trying to be, trying to be a hero in the bedroom and it comes from a negative place, then it's a, it's a validation kind of thing. I mean, what's the, what's, what's the takeaway from that whole idea? You want to take it first, Dave, or you want me to go? Yeah, I don't. I don't want to take the words out of your mouth because I. I just have a feeling that <laughs> we're on the same page here, Jason. Is that that? Uh, let's just paint the picture of like the man lets the woman take the lead in the bedroom. She doesn't want that. Mm. She does not. The, the masculine energy is going to create the space for the feminine to fill. And it's, it's well within each of our desires to be taken. And I think that there's an intentionality behind taking your partner into your arms in deep, intimate connection and having zero investment in the outcome and in the performance and in the validation that you uh, used to seek. And I think that that just comes from a really grounded place, a very primal place of that psychobiological being rewarded for being, um, being the most masculine version of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely, I think for, if we're going to break it down to what is what the great takeaway is, is being present in the moment with zero expectations is the key because when you come at it, being the hero in the bedroom or for the result of, or the expectation of that validation, you've already kind of lost because you're not, you're no longer present. You're, you're going through this routine. You're, you're, you're doing what you think you need to do to get that result versus being present with the feminine partner, being present with your partner and, and responding. And that's what I've always found is the only way to really get me to be that good in the bedroom or anything is to be present with that partner and respond to how they're doing. Because if you're just stuck in your head and you're not being present, they may be giving you all the cues in the world and you're not catching any of them because you're mm -hmm. only focused on what you think is the, the winning formula. So being mm -hmm. present, being that masculine presence and being solid within your masculine and knowing that just being present in that is what you need, but also being willing to, to flow and, and what, what is needed. Who, who do I need to be right now to be the most effective? And mm. I think when we come into from that place of lack and, and that place of agenda, we've already kind of lost the battle, you know, mm. being just being present and being willing to flow with what's needed is, is about the only way. And then you might find yourself you know, being the hero, being the white knight, and she can be your damsel, and it can be a fun game, but it's not coming from a place of need. So just redefine wow. it that way. Hmm. So I, I think, uh, I mean, first of all, Robert says uh, this, that is very accurate. He's probably talking about something you said, Dave. Um, you're pretty <laughs> accurate. Me, I mean, <laughs> we're a team here, boys. We're a team. Um, <laughs> But uh, I think I think um, I think it comes down to purpose um, for a man, purpose in in knowing your purpose and living your purpose. And when you know and live your purpose, then your identity is uh, is what he says. You can't lead if you're not where your feet are. Well, there you go. Um, but uh, I, mean, I think if you know your purpose, then your identity is halfway there. And, and I think getting into our identity and knowing who we are and what we are allows us to be more present. 
and it allows us to be uh, who we're supposed to be in any given moment, in any given circumstance, and that includes in the bedroom. And therefore, in relationship and in the bedroom, you're not looking for validation. You're not looking for somebody to tell you who you are because you already know who you are, and you're bringing them your best. You're bringing them your. Um, you're bringing them your. I told you it was you, Dave. Um, <laughs> Robert, it was you. Um, but I, uh, I think I'm, I'm not watching Facebook. I'm, oh, I'm looking at your beautiful faces, gentlemen. Yeah, well, no, he says, he says, yeah, it was what they would say. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but I, I think, you know, I, I think when you're, when you're coming at it from a seeking validation, then, then you're always going to come at it from a place of insecurity and nobody wants, especially a woman uh, doesn't want insecurity from a man in, in the bedroom or anywhere else. I mean, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so I think, you know, we have to have our motivations, right. I mean, it's, it's, you know, to have purpose, to want to be a hero, to all that kind of stuff. Right now, they're playing the, the Broncos and Panthers Super Bowl on, on TV. Um, and uh, and I'm watching, you know, I'm watching Von Miller just just take the ball from Cam Newton and then score a touchdown. Everybody wants to be the hero, wants to be the MVP. There's nothing wrong with that when you help bring victory yeah. to your team or to your space. But I think if you don't have that set in terms of who you are, then you're always going to be seeking that. And I can tell you from experience, guys, you're going to be disappointed at some point because she's probably going to just get tired of being your mama uh, trying to raise a boy. Um, and she's probably just going to peace out at some point um, because she wants a man. And with you, she might be getting a boy. Hmm. Yeah. And that's a very valid point because you we're talking about being present and being authentic, but we didn't talk about the one thing that most people fear in a relationship is being themselves because they're, especially for men, rejection and judgment are our biggest fears. However, if you're not willing to take a little rejection and judgment and be yourself so that she knows who she's getting, she knows who she's dealing with, then how are you going to be the hero or, or live your purpose? And that's, yeah. that's just of it. Be yourself, live your purpose, <laughs> let her know who you are so she can choose her champion. And then you can create that beautiful relationship in and out of the bedroom. Yep. Hey, speaking of, of creating a beautiful person, if somebody wants to reach out to Dave Glazer to find out how they can become a beautiful person, how they can get an Enneagram done, how they can do some work with Dave Glazer, if they want to get a hold of DG himself, the man, then uh, how do they get a hold of you? That's a, a great question. Uh, believe, be real, be bold.com is a great place to read our blogs, listen to our podcast. Instagram and Facebook are both great places to message us. Um, we're active on Instagram. Memes are our love language. And we like to, we like to highlight the irony uh, that is modern dating. And we'll do it in all different ways through the Enneagram, attachment theory, love languages, and um, very sound psychological principles from the experts that we bring onto the podcast to interview on a weekly basis. So those are the best places to connect with us. And some of those memes are pretty funny, man. I know they're not you because they're too clever. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I mean, there's a couple in there. There's a couple in there, but I know you got help. I mean, it's obvious when, you know, when a guy got help. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with that. All. Speaking of help, sometimes people need help with the connection catalyst. Mm. And the connection catalyst can help a whole lot of people, men and women, man. And and if uh, if if there's a man or a woman that wants to get help with the connection catalyst, that would be Mr. Jason B. Kendrick himself. How would they get a hold of Jason B. Kendrick? It, it, it's right here, jasonbkendrick.com. And I'm actually going to make it easy for you. We're going to put all these links into the discussion underneath. So you can just click the link for myself or for Dave or for Mr. Kirk and Samuel there. Because, you know, I love teaching communication. I love teaching connection and intimacy. And I also know this man over here, the Intimacy Incubator is a powerful tool is a powerful man is a powerful teacher and leader how can they get a hold of you kurt man uh yeah i mean you can call me just don't call me late um but uh my phone number is 720-515-6536 my email is right down there somewhere i don't know when i get my straight but uh man i'm i'm so excited and i had some great feedback from uh from the female part of the relationship um, after working with the guy, all of a sudden she was like, man, you know, she's trusting more. The sex was better. I was like, yeah. Oh, um, so it's pretty, it's pretty rewarding, man. I appreciate you guys. Hey, DG, you, you still live in that same place? I do. That's right. Going on year three over here by city park. And, uh, you might be able to bump into me taking a, taking the dog for a lap on a daily basis around city park. Nice. Nice. Nah, nice. Him, ladies. I know he's all fit and good looking and everything. Yeah. I'll be chasing him. 
this right. session, you know, yeah. you know, meet him the right way. Yeah, yeah. You say <laughs> come correct, you better step right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, uh, yeah, he, he's DG. He ain't no sucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's not a bottom feeder. He's not one of them catfish. You got to have some, you know, you, you got to be a a, a, a a fish that swims at the top of the water to get to this guy, man. But, I mean, uh, clean water fish. You don't want to be clean water fish. fish. Fresh water fish. Okay. All right. We, we love y'all. Like, comment, share. Come back and see us on, on the next. And share the, the recordings. They're all on our, on our Mad Men page. They're on YouTube. But we'll put those links into the comments so you can find this easy. Thank you so much, Dave. Love you, Kirk. See ya. We're going to do this again. Love y'all. Thanks, boys. Peace.